Let's just to say one more thing about this Kindle edition. It does have some strange fonts. I did not place this to be this big. This is a Kindle edition, everything else is normal. In a written book, this everything looks normal. Kindle edition is a little bit off. Just for the size of the fonts, everything else is, is the same. So I am pleased in overall situation. Now let's go book chapter by chapter. And what the writer meant about it. Okay, photomass gravity, it starts. Do you have, do you have, do you have photomass gravity? This was, it starts as an introduction. It says from the first steps, block body radiation, photoelectric effect, and delay. We did hold that Planck constant is constant and that this is this number. And we, more than a century, operated un under that assumption. But, I'm inviting you to, be that as it may, I'm inviting you to reconsider something else because this is important. Why is this important? There is numerous of reasons. And one of the major problems with the particle physics today is too big Planck constant. Because when you're dealing with quarks, you are dealing with the relativistic objects. And within relativistic objects, Planck constant is significantly smaller. And therefore, you cannot make any construction, proper construction, with using this number for the Planck constant in the relativistic, in the relativistically dense objects. It is not my idea that the quarks are relativistic objects. It is an idea of Feynman and Bethe and others. Quarks are relativistic objects. They think they are moving relativistically fast. I am more or less on that stand, but I am definitely I am convinced that quarks are relativistically dense objects. And again, I will show you here, or try to show you, why is that, that Planck constant has to change in gravitational field. So, if you watch the video prior the mass, photomass of gravity, where I explained why, how the mass change in gravitational rest mass change in gravitational field and how does one constant change in the gravitational field this will be more or less about that so over the theories led us to that this is Planck constant and that much that is the same why did I stuck on the Planck constant well, because the particle physics and I had to start somewhere but you will see so this is the first page of the book Okay, let's see. Energy and rest mass. Of course, the Einstein relation between energy and rest mass holds. <laughs> holds an I. So is equal mc squared. What you saw in pre previous video. And this is the relation between mass and energy. And if you increase the energy of the system, you increase its mass. So this is first work against nuclear forces and how you work against nuclear force and will result in increase, increase of mass of nuclear system. So you have first example of proton-proton chain reaction and so on and so forth. With the protons more or less create helium nucleus and lose part, part of its mass and that is bond energy. That is all the, that is very well known thing, it's nothing new here. And when the day system lose mass, it it's constituents uh, lose mass and that is cold bond energy and whatnot. That is nothing new here. So lost in the mass when you making the helium Nucleus will be what will be gain of mass in other way around. So among this nuclear fusion more or less, in other way around, what does it mean? Among other things, it means that if we take helium nucleus in one hand, of course you cannot do that, but try to imagine 
you get you take gallium nucleus in one hand and pluck nucleons one by one. What do you do? You work against against nuclear forces, you have to invent, invest the energy equal to that work, and in doing so, we increase the mass of each constituent. That is something that is normal. Everybody know that and agree upon it. Okay? Now you can work against elastic forces. There is one variant of this experiment in Einstein von Dummies that is some popular book written for everybody, where they talk about the relation between elastic energy and the mass. Of the spring more or less. So you have some unstretched or uncompressed spring, it has mass as it is, but if you want to stretch or squeeze the spring, you will have to work against elastic forces and in doing so you will increase the mass of the springs. So this is the first was work against nuclear forces, second was work against elastic forces, and this is now work against magnetic forces. So there is a similar Example in the book with pictures, and there was some, so to speak, so to speak. This was a real thing. This was uh, my colleague Alexander Bovici, which was on graduation exam, and one of the professors asked us, "This is this was really what's happened? What is range has a big mass, magnets like this when they attract each other, magnets like this when they are packed, repel each other, or magnets like this when they are." Interacted to each other and co put close together. So answer is answer is of course they have larger mass in repulsive configuration because they are when they are unconnected you have to work against magnetic forces. When you work you invest the energy and that energy will result in increasing the rest mass. So you have work against nuclear forces, elastic forces, and magnetic forces. And all of the work against that thing will increase the mass of the constituents that are, are, of course, conservative forces. And now I say there is a work, same thing for the work against the gravitational force. Is there a gravitational force? Yes, of, yes, of course, there is a gravitational force. I did went on and on about some something here, but you have a very simple way to see if is there or is there not gravitational force when you. Take some weight, put it on the on the spring. You will see that spring will stretch. By what? By gravitational force, of course. That so the gravitational force is reality, and Newton's equation is are good enough for some basic uh, calculations, so forth and so on. So if you work against gravitational force, you will also increase the mass of the object. If I take this book and elevate it from here to here, I will increase its mass. In relation with mass, is e energy is equal to mass times speed of light square and so on. And this is how much you will increase the mass here at the surface of the Earth. If you lift a 5 kilogram cat on the elevation of 1 meter, you will increase this much of the cat's mass. So this much of cat mass will be larger than end on the floor. That is definitely, that is now hypothetically, this is reality. And that is the, for the surface of the Earth, for the surface of some neutron stars and, and some other very, very dense objects. This mass defect will be significant, or mass increase if you lift it. Okay? Now, about energy conservation of free fall, there is something to, to, to talk about that. There is story about the shoes, but there is a better story about bouncing walls in the first video, or second video, that I placed here, so I will not talk about energy conservation in free fall, I will just say that energy is conserved in the free fall. Let me say it again, if you have two same bouncing balls here, they are at the same level, they have same mass and same energy. But if, you, if I take one and elevate it here, now this ball here has a greater energy than this one there. Why? Well, because I work to do that. And what is the difference? That here has a greater mass than that one there. That is definitely, that is what I'm trying to tell. And how do I know that the energy of that one is larger than that one? Well, because I, if I let it go, it will bounce all the time up and down. Obviously, it has a greater energy than this one. And furthermore, surplus of energy is not lost in the gravitational field. It is constant. That surplus of energy is 
constant. It's not loss. So you have here mega mass, the mass is reduced, rest mass, then bouncing up and down and up and down. We have a good explanation in previous video, so I'm not going to talk about that. So I'm stating here, just like the energy conservation is valid for the objects, it is valid for the photon also. And because it's valid for the objects and the, for the photon, it's obvious we measure that, that frequency of photon increase when, when you fall down, that means that Planck constant has to decrease downwards. So, Planck constant has one value here, smaller here, smaller here, smaller here, and I will try to show you that that actually is necessary in order to have quark like we do have, and so on, so on. So, that is, this introduction is most important thing in the book, and this, in short, my personal most important claim, this all here should be standard in physics today. There is nothing new here. There shouldn't be anything, nothing here. There shouldn't be anything new here. This is derived from the Einstein equation for the rest mass and energy and the relation between energy and mass. And this is here just the consequence of that thing. And the consequence of this energy conservation and free fall and gravitational field. If you ask any physicist who is decent, they will tell you energy is, of course, of the photon, does not increase as the photon falls down. Energy of the photon does not decrease as, as it goes up on the surface of the Earth. Energy of the photon is constant. So, in the back of our mind, we know this is true. But it is not a pleasant thing to consider. Because, why? Because all the quantum physics dealing with this Planck constant. And great part of the atomic physics. Nuclear and whatever. It is not a pleasant thing to do, but we have to do it. Science does not care about our emotions. So this is the most important thing, and this is what I'm stating. For I am 99.99% .99 sure about it. In science, you will never have to be 100% sure about anything. So this is the direction I think we need to move on. And from here, downwards, is future physics question mark. I think future physics will develop in this direction that, that, that I will try to show you, but that is not very important for the time being. This is the most important thing. And from this, you derive future physics as you wish, but you will have to use this, and you will have to use this. Because there is no advance in particle physics, in quark theory, in quark shapes and size and whatnot, if you do not this, take this into account. And if you do not take rest mass change in, in the gravitational field, there is no real hope for us to determine the relativistic gravitational objects. Dark energy, dark matter, and whatnot. This is the key for that, and this is the key for the quarks. And actually, both of this are key for the, for the whole thing. So there is nothing wrong with, with physics, but in order to move forward, we will need to take these things into account, and again, these things are, should be very normal to us. So that is, that is for the first video. See you in a second.